Okay, well, this is the second video in this series. I heard from the comments. I heard from the customers. They want to hear more about how I'm building up this new company of interview at. Now, it's one of multiple companies I run, but you're getting in on the ground floor and you're kind of watching it grow as we figure out exactly what the monetization models are, how we do customer development, all of the things that are kind of separate and apart from the interview content that we put out, but kind of giving you a glimpse into how an ex-Amazon, ex-Microsoft, ex-Oracle, ex-Founder senior executive would go about attacking this problem, right? That's really what I want to share in these videos and hopefully you get some value out of it. And so the question I'm now getting asked is, as I talk about this new software that I wanna go build, how do, how do you even get started, right? You have an idea or maybe you have an idea, how, how do you get started? Uh, and the, the short answer is with the end in mind. Right? That's, a, that's a thing I learned at Amazon uh, when I was a senior executive there working on the Kindle team. Uh, but it is very real as a way to approach whether or not this is something worth doing. Right? And so the, the first thing I want to ask myself is what problem do I think I'm solving for what customer? Right? And, and be very clear about that in my mind. And so where do these ideas come from? Now, I've done over 200 interviews, 200 fake, uh, mock interviews. Uh, for interviewout.com. And I, in the follow up sessions, I listen to customers and I'm listening to how they're preparing, uh, the challenges they're having and preparing for their interviews. Uh, and, I, and I hear again and again kind of similar things, similar ideas bubble up to the surface. Um, and I spend a lot of time thinking deeply about the, what I'm hearing and seeing again and again, right? My superpower is pattern matching. I'm the worst of the Marvel superheroes because I can pattern match really well. Uh, it's totally useless when Thanos comes, except maybe I'll notice that he might try to snap his fingers again, but you know, that's not gonna work out too well. Um, so I, not only am I thinking deeply about my own kind of observations, but I'm thinking deeply about experiences that I've had. Oftentimes you're gonna wanna scratch your own itch and go solve problems that you have. You can't leverage yourself only as the customer, right? You got to talk to actual people uh, and hear what they have to say. But usually the ideas that kind of interest you that you want to go work on are things that you know, are going to be problems that you yourself have. So you can go solve that problem. So what I've seen again and again in these mock interviews, if you'd like to sign up for a free mock interview, you can do so at interviewat.com. So what have I seen in these 200 plus mock interviews? Well, I've seen again and again that people are writing out overly long documents. I did the same thing, right? I, when I was interviewing for chief product officer roles, vice president product roles, I would try to prepare for these interviews. I was preparing so hard and I realized, well, there had to be a better way because it was just, it was hard, a lot of work and it felt like a second job. But now that I'm kind of talking to candidates, I see it again and again, very, very long word documents with every imagined possible question they might get or um, long Excel spreadsheets which is kind of the same content, but if you've ever tried to use Excel or Google Sheets to organize content, it's a terrible editing experience. So I don't know why people continue to do this, but they convince themselves that columns somehow are better and the, and the columns that are available and more documents are just also equally awful. So you kind of have a worst of both worlds and nothing works well. But this is what people are doing and they're spending a ton of time writing out these answers, but they're overly long. Uh, we don't write the way we speak. So when they try to give these speeches, it doesn't really work because they stumble over their words. Um, it, it, they're rarely editing the content out, right? So they're not really thinning up the content. Um, and it's just tough to organize this content for interviews. So I decided to attack this problem, right? So what problems did I see, right? Generating story ideas, right? This is what I hear again and again from customers. I, I have trouble generating story ideas. How do I go about doing that? How do I put them in, in a framework that will help me come back to them and, and organize them into my stories that I wanna use my interviews? That was one. Uh, two organizing my stories. Well, now that I've got a bunch of stories, how do I know which ones I should use or think about or write, but how do I do that? Okay. Uh, and then finally three, creating the content that they will then use in their storytelling when they're in their interviews, right? How do they then communicate that out? These were the problems that I saw. And I said, okay, I actually think that there's a business and you know, a revenue line item here. Let me spend some time thinking about that. So what are the first steps of an ex-Amazon, ex-Microsoft, uh, ex-Oracle, ex-Founder type person, senior executive, guy that could go run a company? What, how am I gonna attack this problem? Well, listen, this is basic blocking and tackling, right? This is the Amazon working backwards process. You start with a press release, which I wrote. You start with the FAQ, uh, the FAQ, the Frequently Asked Questions, which I wrote. That is a singular document, right? One page press release, written in language that a human can understand, no jargon, no paradigm shifting, blah, 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 none of that, right? That clearly lays out what problem are you trying to solve, for what customer, some things about how the product works, and includes some kind of optimistic customer quotes. 
and then the FAQ, which is a series of questions that you basically would need to answer to defend going down this path, investing resources, time, energy, money, whatever, into this endeavor to anyone else who is a decision maker, right? Answer those questions. And that is generally a two to six page document, depending on how much depth you need to put into it. Incidentally, I do have this document. I've debated whether or not I want to make this document available, but I did go through this exercise with what I'm calling Story Builder. That's my kind of code name in my head that I'm using. But if you want to see this document, if I see enough people put in the comments that they want to see what this document looks like, put it in the comments. I'll put the document up for people. I'll do another video where I release it or whatever, but I'll make that available. But right now I'm feeling, I don't know. I have that, that, that worry that someone's going to steal my idea, which is completely stupid because as we all know, execution matters and we all worry about someone stealing our idea, but this one feels a little too much that I'm giving it away. And there's too much of a gap in my development skills that I worry about. I can't build it fast enough and someone else might be able to build it faster. So I do worry about that a little bit, but I'm, I'm, I'm definitely uh, willing to continue to grow with the audience. Put it in the comments. We'll put up the doc. So once the press release and FAQ are done, what do you do? Well, share it with people you trust. Show it around, right? Get their inputs, right? Normally you would do a meeting with like the decision makers, but I'm an audience of one, a, a cast of one. I can't do that. So I have to go to some people that I trust. I share it with them and I get their input and I see what questions I'm not answering, uh, what concerns they have. Do I really sell this as something that solves a problem? Does it resonate with them, right? As a potential person who's looking for a job, do they look at this and go, yes, I understand these problems. Yes, these are problems that people probably have. Yes, this is something worth doing. Once I had that clearly outlined in my head, now it's time to talk to customers, right? Now I'm very fortunate. I have, you know, we've hundreds of people have signed up for interview ad. Uh, some people actually get their market interview. Some people just sign up and then they don't ever, don't ever uh, get their interview set up. But that's I've got hundreds of names in my database. So I sent out an email saying, hey, I would like to talk to you about an idea I have. So I'm going to set up a Calendly link uh, with 15 minute slots. And I just want to, you know, kind of talk to you about this product idea I have since you have identified yourself as someone who's looking for a job or in the process of looking for a new job and you're getting ready to go on interview. I would like to know if this software would solve a problem that you'd have and whether or not you'd be willing to pay for it. And surprisingly, a bunch of people signed up, which was pretty awesome. Now, here's a little side story on this. Uh, if you're going to go down this path, don't make the dumb mistake I made, which is have 15 minute slots over two hour window, so eight slots over three days, so 24 slots, uh, all back to back because I'm a moron. I didn't think I would fill them up. So that's me not thinking big enough, I guess. Uh, and they all filled up. And so I didn't have time to like, you know, get water or use the restroom or do, do anything, even feed myself. So don't do that. <laughs> Give yourself a buffer zone uh, and 15 minutes isn't enough because you're, some of them are going to run over. So just don't do that. It was amazing. I did all of the interviews. I talked to a bunch of customers of mine who were willing to spend time with me to talk through the challenges they had in preparing for their interviews, their process, the things they hated, the things they liked, there weren't that many things that they liked, uh, and where they really found themselves stumbling and looking for answers online, where they were asking questions of others. Uh, and I learned a lot. Uh, as, as good as a product manager as I thought I was uh, or am, I didn't have all the answers and rightfully so, right? I look at it through my lens and my experiences, but I missed a bunch of stuff and it was really great uh, to have my plan, have that first contact with customers to hear their feedback and to understand where it was falling short or other directions I might want to go or other twists, little nuances, things I might want to change, think about that might enable future product ideas, right? Don't need to ship it in V1, but just, hey, if you made this one small tweak, it would enable you to do these other things down the road. Have you thought about that? Uh, and so it was, it was absolutely fantastic. So you take all that feedback and you refine your idea. You refine your FAQ, you refine your doc, and you look at it and then you have to ask yourself the most important question. If I'm successful, is this something I'm willing to spend the next, you know, two, three, five years working on? Because that's really what you're signing up for. If you're going to sign up to go, you know, ask people for money for something that you're building. You're going to have to support those people. You're going to have to build the product along with them and add impro uh, feature improvements and kind of grow the feature set so that it becomes what it is they expect of it uh, and hopefully satisfy all of their wants and needs because that's what our job is as, as builders uh, to make sure our customers are getting what they need. So when you have that answer for yourself, this is something I truly care about. Uh, well, great. Now, now it's time to make a decision. Go or no go. I decided, well, I decided to go. So, uh, you know, that's the process to get started. The, the next set of questions is really, uh, you know, something that would be familiar with the engineers or maybe not. Uh, and for, you know, non-technical founders, it's going to be, well, do I, do I hire contract devs right, if I'm a non-technical founder? Uh, or do I, uh, do I do it myself? Do I just start building? 
Um, and, and once I start building, second question, what stack do I use, right? How do I go about building this? What are the things I want to use to build this? What's, what's going to lock me into some technology silo that I didn't realize I'm making a mistake uh, and it's going to be really expensive to unwind? How do I go about building this the right way? A lot of questions to ask myself, and, and I'll start talking about that over the next handful of weeks, but certainly starting next week, uh, how I made went, went about thinking through those questions and make the decisions I had to make in order to move. Yeah, here we are. We're, we're building this thing and we're going to move forward and we'll be living it.